Hi, this presentation is about error correction. So what happens when things go wrong? What happens if a transactional instrument is registered and then subsequently determined to be defective? Uh, there is an error uh, on the register due to a defective instrument. There are two broad categories of defective instrument. Errors that when detected result in a void deed, that would be fraud. Uh, in void deeds there's usually no consent from a grantor, i.e. someone has uh, tried to sell what they do not own. Within general property law a deed can be registered, upon discovery it is void, it is overturned and generally interpreted that the void deed never existed. And then errors that when detected result in a voidable deed, so this could be a, re a registration error or a malicious tampering. Sorry, tampering. Uh, in a voidable deed, either the grantor gives their consent, even if some cases that consent is induced by unfair means, or the legal instrument is tampered with, or the registrar introduces an error during registration. So transaction errors can start to introduce competing ownership. And competing ownership refers to a legally incorrect transfer of ownership results in two different parties, the original owner and the purchaser, believing they have a legal owner at the same time. And competing ownership arises due to this defective instrument registration. So a title is indefeasible if it is immune from such competing claims, whether that competing owner, uh, sorry, whether from a competing owner, as we've just decided, uh, sorry, as we've just described, or from the holder of some derivative right, such as a mortgage. Uh, and so this is where third parties have rights over the land, which could mean they assume ownership. So defeasibility is where the chain of title has legal ambiguity and there is competing ownership. So let's resolving these defeasibility issues. Well, whilst title and defeasibility is important, a registrar needs to master the legal processes that are deployed to resolve these defeasibility issues in a train of title. So according to Reed, the truth is that while a system of land registration can allocate defeasibility, it cannot eliminate it. Instead, it must deal as best it can with the instruments served up to it by fallible human beings. Defeasibility is caused by human error or fraud, and no legislation can prevent error or fraud, although it can and should put system in place to discourage it. So, when can we resolve defeasibility? There are two logical outcomes to the resolution of a defeasible title. There's deferred defeasibility, i.e. the original owner is preferred and the invalid registered legal instrument once detected is overturned. This tends to be the solution under a common law deeds registration system or immediate indefeasibility. The purchaser is preferred and the invalid registered legal instrument is upheld. This tends to be the solution under a torrents title by registration system, where the purchaser is preferred over the true owner, compensation may be paid, hence the insurance principle in the torrents framework. And the labels focus on how long it takes for register to even resolve or embrace an invalid legal instrument. So let's look at this kind of defects in registration systems. The majority of registered legal instruments and associated titles are good, and that really needs to be said up front. Uh, and so what happens in the rare cases where the legal instruments are defective and result in a title which is not good? So initially we need to determine if a system is monojural, a deed system, or bijural, a title by registration or torrents type system. So a monodural register of deed system reflects the ordinary rules of property law. Um, registration, although uh, usually necessary, is not a sufficient step for a creation of a real right. There must also be a valid deed granted by a person with title to grant. So a person acquires ownership if and only if the grantor owns land and the transfer itself was carried out properly. So title thus flows from the register only in the sense that registration marks the final stage in the process of transfer and the registration of a conveyance which is forged or granted confers no right at all. Thus title is a relative title, it's derived from the, 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 yeah, the legal facts that are contained within the legal instruments. Uh, so how do you correct under a, a monodurial system? Uh, there's only one option, and that's a view based upon the common law, which tends to be you cannot sell what you do not own. So if a deed is wrong, it is either made void, it never uh, existed, or corrected. And so essentially you have um, 
this kind of scenario where you have your original grant and then you have your number of transactional deeds um, and a transactional deed has an error this can be corrected and the next time the title is derived back from the good root of title these corrections will be reinterpreted and reflected in the next kind of state derivation this reinterpretation process can be perceived to be costly as described by Matt the virtue of common law was that it provided security of ownership to a very high degree and the vice was that it did so at the expense of a facility to transfer so let's look now at what happens in a bijural or a, a registration by title approach. So in positive registration, the ordinary rules of property law are set aside. Title flows from the register and not from the transferor's conveyance. A person entered as owner on the register is the owner, so there's no need to interpret this chain of title. And if the conveyance was good, the title so conferred is absolutely good. And if the conveyance was bad, the title is good but voidable. As a general rule, positive systems does not admit the possibility of void titles. Uh, the majority, but not all, registration systems are positive. Hence, it's possible to get two views about how to re resolve an invalid legal instrument. The view based upon the common law, you cannot sell what you do not own, or the view based upon registration law, the act of registration makes an indefeasible title. This conflict is called by jural inaccuracy, and the issue here then is which legal framework takes priority and what is the redress. So in a bijural system, the law needs to frame two issues, who to protect, and the choice of who to protect is a choice between the person seeking to acquire the property right and the person who owns the land, and then how to protect, and the choice of how to protect lies between um, protection which is deferred and protection which is immediate. Since the matter of who is a matter of policy and how of technique uh, for our uh, demonstration for who takes precedence. So under general property law security of ownership gives preference to the grantor. The traditional answer is not in doubt says Reed a transfer which is radically defective is no transfer at all. Ownership, ver ownership therefore remains where it was and a would-be acquirer must go without. Under positive registration law facility of transfer gives gives preference to the grantee. So, but if the land is on a register of title, it's only necessary to check with a seller is the person listed on the register as the owner. So in a pure register of title, uh, in such a scenario, uh, a good route of title is not followed by transactional deeds. All deeds are register deeds. When a register deed has an error, this cannot be corrected. Title by registration is indefeasible, always providing a good route of title. So we've introduced deed types. We've got transactional deeds and we've got registered deeds. So, uh, and these have resulted potentially in two types of error, a transactional error and a register error. So transactional errors occur after the good root of title, and this can only be resolved under general property law. And a register error occurs before good root of title, and this can only uh, be resolved under property registration law. And so we have these two uh, ways of conceptualizing either your pure register of deeds or a pure register of title. So what about a third way? What happens if you can just change the position of your good root of title? So you move that kind of point of indefeasibility from the poles and place it somewhere else in the transactional chain. If a deed is an error, then the, the approach to correction is dependent upon whether the error is a register error, an error correction is not allowed, compensation is the only redress, or a transactional error where error correction is allowed and is resolved under general property law. This is exactly the approach taken in Scots law. So uh, Reed and Gretton in their natalie entitled book Land Registration state that land registration requires three registers, or at least land registration in Scotland. Uh, that's a register of plot of land, a spatial index of owned land, cadastral unit register, uh, a register of deeds to deliver transactional change and store known ownership rights of a register, as these known ownership rights are described using geometri geometry or as verbalizations against a cadastral unit, a spatial index uh, can be used to cross-reference between the two, and a register of title. This articulates the party who holds owned land. 
And so the hybrid registration in Scotland allows significant flexibility for the creation, variation and discharge of real rights. And this is especially important for securities and for transactional management in a digital system. It also provides a, a novel approach to error correction. So Scotland places a point of indivisibility prior to the last transaction and introduces a statutory time limit. So there's only ever one transactional deed and up to that transactional deed everything else represents a good root of title. So if a, a registered transactional error is detected it's corrected under property law. Uh, property law. That means that the, the whole system favours the true owner. So if fraud has been has occurred then the true owner still has security that they can get their land back. Undetected transactional errors become register errors. So if fraud has undertaken and um, it hasn't actually been noticed, i.e. the real owner is not in possession, um, and then the land is actually sold, um, then the good faith uh, buyer is protected that they cannot be uh, removed from that land because it's gone from a transaction error to a register error. Uh, and good faith, uh, as we said, good faith requires. So if a registrar is detected and it's not corrected and a successful claimant will receive compensation and not the property. So to be sure of an indefeasible title, the register uh, must be checked to ensure the seller is named on the register as proprietor, but also that the seller has been in possession for a year. Further checks are required if the seller is in possession for less than a year. Now this is hardly onerous and kind of does, uh, in many respects, address many of those uh, issues about um, uh, the complications of deriving good root of title as brought up by MAP earlier on. So let's have a look at some of the, the consequences here. So hybrid and digital registration um, fully acknowledge core components of digital uh, registers. So this includes the needs to represent concepts such as state, uh, so title for example and state change so a deed or request or an application and to be explicit about error correction in terms of register and transactional deeds so there's also this issue of uncertainty uh, and how registers define themselves so since the uh, 90s there's been a rise in identity fraud affecting registered land systems and courts in Australia Ontario British Columbia Malaysia and Singapore have discovered their statues present by dural ambiguity. And in some of these, stat, uh, these jurisdictions, statutes which have long been assumed to incorporate either immediate or deferred into feasibility have been judicially interpreted to embody the opposite rule. Now this is quite serious, because if a lawmaker cannot accurately predict the type of interfeasibility their laws represent, then there is significant legal uncertainty. Um, not only that, it's going to be more difficult to correct it because your register is designed for a specific model uh, in place. Whereas what we have with a uh, hybrid system is the ability to transition between either type of model depending upon where you position that point of indivisibility. So by focusing on this primitives change error correction and product derivation, a jurisdiction can build a more resilient register that can change with society's needs. Dixon, in 2022, said that the key is sure to have a system that works in the social, economic and political climate that it governs, rather than one that cleaves to preconceived principle. And a traditional view is that a land registration system is either a deed or a title system, or a state or a state change system. And I would argue this is clearly an helpful oversimplification. We have argued that the critical issue is where a jurisdiction, oh, sorry, is where a jurisdiction places good root of title. The point in a chain of deeds between original grant and current transaction, in which the jurisdiction deems the right to be indefeasible. indefeasible. By recognising that a register needs to represent state and state change, we see that a register requires components that are equivalent to traditional deeds and title registers. We believe this allows policymakers the flexibility to adapt their legal processes to reflect social need without changing the reg uh, registration system. So it adopts the middle ground and provides resilience. Thank you very much indeed. I hope you've enjoyed that.